those hot boxes. The hot box? Yeah, I get that question all the time. Build me a hot box. Okay, that's something I built a long, long time ago. How long ago? I don't know. I was a teenager, I think. Maybe, okay, maybe like back in the long, long 19, ago. maybe just turning 20. All right, so you want to know where I came from and why this is what it is. You know, what, what did why I do? Why you went from building guitars to building amps. Right. And, and I, I will tell you this as I'm staring into the brightest light I've ever seen come out of that cell phone. And I have no idea why it's on. But anyway, um, you know, I was a guitar guy when I started out. Guitars, guitars, guitars. I built guitars. I fixed guitars. Um, that's a, another video we could we could get into. But you know, I had a, a pretty large electronics base of knowledge back then because of you know, where I came from as a child, working with my father and my uncle on electronics, and 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 then, and then going to high school for electrical, which you know gave me all basic theory. But then then I was on jobs with my father, learning how to lay things out. So I, I had. You know, I had a really good knowledge of, 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 of a, a electrical, like how does electricity work, you know? Like from a wiring houses and stuff? Yeah, but even beyond that, because I started to really learn it myself, and, and I probably did horrible in high school because there was nothing, I mean, they were teaching me how to strip a wire. I remember the first day I went in there, I'm like, dude, I've been doing this since I was five years old, you know? But anyway, long story short. So I had the, the knowledge and the base, and I've got into this in other videos before why I started to design amps, because the, the ones that were out there didn't sound good enough to me. And uh, so I started building rocket ships, you know. And anyway... Things to make those amps sound better. Right. So the hot box was probably one of my first things. It was to drive existing amps like Marshalls and stuff. And being a champion of the Class A thing, the hot box was a Class A amplifier of sorts that drove into these other ramps to impart that Class A sound. And I don't know, I used some sort of TV tubes. I don't even remember the numbers on them or whatever. So don't ask me to build a hot box. It's not going to happen. I have a lot of complicated designs in my life, and I move on. I don't remember those things. Um, but, you know, the box was used by some real hot shots. So a guy named Joe Stump. I believe the word is neoclassical. He's just a burning guitar player. Also an instructor at Berkeley these days. And... Uh, he lit his marshals up with those things, and uh, you know there was a bunch of those guys back then. But it but still wasn't good enough. For well, you? not for me because I mean, those marshals are just continually blow up anyway. But but I, you know I wanted to continue with my designs, but there was always boxes involved in my designs because that taught me about floating the front end, and and you know that's where Game Master is comes from a lot of different devices, you know. To, to the point of now where I can get any sound I want at any volume and stuff like that. So The magical game master. Yeah, so there, there were amps I started building, of course, single ended amps. There were the gray amps, the white amps, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to skip a lot of stuff here, okay? Various. Uh, what about that mini amp that you love so I'll much? I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and and um, it's really tough to look into that bright light. But anyway, so the 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 the, the um better yeah we'll, we'll skip forward to uh, sometime in the mid '80s I want to say maybe '84 or something I'd finally reached the pinnacle of what I thought was single-ended design and I built the beast of an eight-tube single-ended amp that Sean Lane would use. Uh, to record on a lot of stuff, including the entire Powers of Ten record, and go on tour with, and uh, and um, you know, so that brings us up to that amp. Then let's flash forward a little bit. Texas, early '90s. I was building a three-channel monster amp. I know I fell prey to the whole channel switching thing. You know, there's there's plenty of things I wish I hadn't done, like maybe wear bell bottoms. In the 70s, right? Okay. <laughs> but, I like the Okay, but you know, so the channel switcher, you read all about that. That was a beast of an amp. It was really good. Push pull, though. This is this is where I, I and I'd been building push pull amps along with the single ended amps. Like even the Sean Lane amps had a push pull series that went with it. Um, so, you know, and then we flash forward after Texas, I disappear for a while, okay? pretty much get out of it. I find another way to make 
money and it's a lot easier than working for guitar players. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this video as short as I can. So flash forward again, let's say around 2004 I believe. I want to get back in, I want to start building amps again. So I build a series of push-pull amps, there were three of them in the series, a lot of you guys out there watching have them, they're killer they amps. There. Um, the tool on the bottom, the very bottom is the KT77 one, that's the KT66 one, and that amp on top of the 90s amp, that chassis up there is the E84L, four E84Ls at about 60 watts, that's a the ripping one that little amp. The yeah, I, yeah, I got to put that back in the cabinet. So that little bitty one. Well, that's the next series. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So anyway, those amps are push-pull amps that operate very class A. Um, and then when when I come up with an amp I feel is better, I discontinue the amps I was building. Okay, I, I don't keep building eight million designs. There's, there's no need to. I want to give you guys the best amp in the world. So when I come up with something better, why would I want to sell you the old one? Why do you want to ask me for the old one, too? It's beyond me. But, you know, like a hot box, like something I built, you know, what, 40 years ago? I mean, really, you know? So anyway, then this amp here, alongside of the little one, we're built on the same format. The little one is a pair of six V6s, just a just a killer sounding little amp. You've seen the videos of it, and most of you guys have played it at the shows. It'll drive a 412 or a little 112, and this amp's a killer KT66 amp. Uh, just refining everything down to my single tone control design. Going back to my roots like I, like I used to do, you know. Um, doing things my way without anybody, you know, listening to what anybody wants, because nobody really knows what they want anyway. Huh? And, and so, so I, I, I go back to building my way on those. And guys like Tad Hill and play through that amp. It's killer sounding amps, those two amps. They're really good. Um, and of course, when we flash forward to this, is this amp better? Yeah, sure it is, because it's, it's my latest thing. But those amps are no slouch. Anything in that series um, is, is, is right up there. But don't ask me for them. I don't make them anymore. I got all I can do to concentrate on building one incredible thing at one time. Okay, so. You gonna make a combo? <laughs> Never, this amp will never be available in a combo. Let me tell you why. First off, I don't like combos, okay? And I'm not here to insult you if you like them, but this thing, it's just an open back cabinet to me, this shouty, loud open back cabinet, and, and it's not the way to go. And if you take this design of a beautiful sounding cabinet, and then you stick this in there, you've just ruined this design, okay? You've taken the reflection off the whole top of the box, and it's got to be open back now, and it's, come on, and, and then, oh, and then not to mention, what have you done to the amp? The amp is in there getting the shit kicked out of it, the tubes, by the speakers. Not, not my cup of tea. Some of these I put in combos. Um, what about that thing? Those were combos I built before this amp and alongside of these two amps, okay? They're single-ended, they're killer-sounding little carry-and-go amps. I, I, I built a, a limited run of them. I wanted to see how it went. I wanted to see if I could bring in a different demographic um, of, of a lower price, plenty of compromises in there. For me, I mean, most people play that and they've never even heard anything that good, but to me it's compromises compared to this kind of stuff. So um, it, it was lower price. And what wound up happening, as usual, is all my customers bought them, guys that already own this stuff and want to carry and go amp. I didn't bring in a new demographic to my world with those amps. So discontinued, and I don't build them anymore. And if you have one, enjoy it, because I'm not making them anymore. It'd be worth a lot of money someday. Well, all these amps will, really. They're investments. Like a train wreck. Yeah. And anyway, um, then that brings us up to this amp. Now, why did I start building this amp again? Well, I was building those, and this guy Dan called me out of the blue. I didn't know him from Adam, now we're friends. And um, he'd been listening to the whole Sean Lane thing and said, oh, I gotta have one of those amps. And he's a smart guy. He figured, why don't I just call the guy that built them? Because you can't find a used one. And if you do, someone's gonna hold you hostage for it. So anyway, I told him, you know, I, I can't build that. And then it costs way too much to build, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, some people have the means. He said, give me an estimate. And so, 
I didn't figure he'd ever go for it. I gave him an estimate, and, he, and, and I called him back, and he said, yeah, do it. So I thought, whoa. So I, I went ahead and I built it. And uh, I, didn't have, I had, haven't had one of those amps in my possession for probably at least 25 years. I haven't played through one. And I sat down, and I played through that amp. And I thought, whoa, you know, I've got to find a way to bring this back even better. Well, but I didn't my... get the Game Master, so you had... Yeah, and I had the Game Master now, too. you got to remember that. So, so now I can really fine-tune something in it. And, and 35, whatever, more years of experience, right? So uh, that lit the fire under me to stop building those push-pull amps and go back to my, totally back to my roots. But this time, just no holds barred, the best, best thing you can build. And, and carryable, you know, something you can pick up and carry. The other amps, forget it, you can't use them. And that ridiculous preamp in the Sean Lane amp was just, you know, so original but so hard to use. I mean, really, it's just a separate unit. Everything's way too heavy and all that. I mean, I mean. Rack mounted. Yeah, rack mounted. You know, all the mistakes you could possibly make, but I was a young kid, I just wanted to build the greatest sounding amp. I didn't care about anything like how heavy it was. And I, and I concern myself with all that now. This head packed up to ship out with a Game Master in a box and all that is 47 pounds, okay? So so it, it's not it's not a beast. I mean, I go out of my way to make it as light. It's got huge transformers, but, you know, I go, you know, all hand-welded chassis down to down a hundred thousandths and, and with aluminum, and I, and, I, and I try to go out of my way to make them light. But that's a basic rundown of the history of where I come from. Remember, I left a lot out, so if you have something that I didn't mention, don't feel like I wasn't thinking of it. I just, you know, tried to, trying to keep this video less than whatever, 15 minutes or whatever. Peace out.